It shouldn't be anything that prevents our young, beautiful future leaders from being able to achieve their highest goals. So this is why when we come here tonight, we're saying the, the, the nation is looking at New Jersey. And the state's environmental authorities are listening to what people think about new rules to enforce New Jersey's environmental justice law. It was passed two years ago, but hasn't taken effect yet. For three hours, people in Newark spoke about the law during the DEP's final in-person hearing. Some people support it because they've lived through pollution their whole lives. I swam in contaminated swimming pool that had to be closed down because of dioxin. Anybody swam in Hayes pool? You were swimming in contaminated waters. If you didn't know. My neighbors and I become aware of the polluted air around us when we can no longer bear to breathe because of the toxic smells outside. We have to stay indoors and keep our windows shut for the night to breathe comfortably. I am now a father. I have a kid and I have another one on the way. And I grew up with asthma because I grew up here in, in Ironbound where there's a lot of factories and smoke and smog. And I'm worried about my kids' future and their air. If things get worse, will, can we afford to stay here is a question I have to keep asking myself. As written, the law would require the DEP to evaluate health and environmental effects before approving certain types of pollution permits in overburdened communities. Overburdened meaning places that already have high levels of pollution and residents are often low income or people of color. A possible workaround to this proposal would be an economic exception, which some people strongly disagree with. An economic exception would effectively gut this bill. Don't do it. People's lives are at stake. If we allow any exemptions for the law for economic interests, then polluters, many of whom have virtually unlimited amounts of money to spend on lawyers and lobbyists, will find a loophole to these rules. Why is it that only black and brown and poor white communities have to make this choice? It, um, it is tantamount to extortion. And not just extortion from industry, but extortion by society. Businesses don't see it that way. Leaders say they want to help overburdened communities, but they think the law is too burdensome and will cost the state jobs. You can see jobs move out of the state or not come into the state, and the benefits that these facilities can bring to communities. Let people speak, please. Thank you. Rather than having businesses work with communities, uh, work with neighbors, trying to improve things, having a net environmental benefit, what the rule does is fall back on what DEP has done, and that's an overly prescriptive command and control type of scenario. My way of making a living and many other of the members of the building trades have been put aside and not considered, and these projects have gone away that would have been gainful employment for new generations of people. When it comes time to think about this job, just don't shut the jobs down. Let's come together and figure out a way so that we can all work together so our members could continue to feed their families because our members are also part of the communities. The DEP is holding a final virtual hearing tonight and written comments can be sent to the DEP until September 4th. In Newark, I'm Ted Goldberg, NJ Spotlight News.